I'm the nigga they talk about. Hey, the Chico, get up, my nigga. Yo, you don't know what it is. Y'all see me looking at the camera, but I'm also looking at, I got the dual monitor in here today. What I'm about to do is, well, I'm, I'm, hold on, my bad. I, I just taught my boot camp and I wear my op around my mouth. Um, Get to watch what you be saying. And the reason why I'm wearing my op, give y'all a quick lesson, my op, you know, you heard about the Ten Commandments, you heard about all, well, 6,000 years ago, it was a group of laws that called the Laws of Ma'at. Look them up. That's all I got to say. Bang, we back. So look, um, I know everybody talking about the Haney's and the Gervantes. Definitely got the smoothie in the building. I added some coconut water so I could stay hydrated. So, um, everybody talking about the Haney's, everybody talking about the, uh, the Gary Russell's, everybody talking about the Gervonta Tank Davises, and, you know, and they right, everybody should be talking about those dudes, but, uh, it's a lot of young cats out here that's boxing right now, and the cat that I don't see nobody talking about because he not in the media looking to be you know, going back and forth with people. If you call his name, I feel like he gonna come directly to you and give you work. He already fighting 12 rounders. He already, who I'm talking about? I'm talking about my man, Too Sharp, Shakur Stevenson. We about to do like a quick film study on one of his last opponents. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's Felix Caraballo. Caraballo, if I said that right. Too sharp Shakur. I'm, we about to just go over a quick, a quick, like what they would call a synopsis of um, comparing his style to how he is against other fighters and comparing his style to other fighters from back in the day, like old school fighters like Sugar Ray, you know, the golden era of boxing. You know what I mean? And that's the 80s. So, and that was the golden era of boxing, the 80s. Sugar Ray, because you had the four kings. Roberto Duran, Sugar Ray Leonard, Tommy Hearns, Marvin Hagler. Anytime you talk about a golden era of something, if y'all don't know that, the golden era comes after the comedic um, historical fact that Kemet or Egypt the fourth dynasty was known as the golden era of civilization. So the golden era, the reason why it was named the golden era of civilization because it was peace and prosperity throughout the world and man and woman can rule equally, that's a fact. And it's well documented uh, through trade and commerce. So gotta look that up, that's the fourth dynasty of Egypt, um, Hufu. Uh, was the uh, Egyptian? It's not Khufu. It's Khufu because the K and the H is silent. If you you know, if you study your culture, let me get a little smoothie real quick. Mm. Pause. Next, um, what else? So yeah, so anytime somebody names something, the golden era of something, for example, the golden era of crime story, mystery. It was the four queens and one of the stories, uh, you know what? Just look that up. Just look that up. That's something you got to look up. I can't give y'all all the bars because I'll be watching the movies too. You know what I mean? So we just going to go over Shakur Stevenson, man, because I feel like the brother is really talented. 
uh, he has the the template skill set of Floyd Mayweather for real. Um, but he also has some other guys up in there, Pauls, that his style kind of like resembles, or he has little bits and pieces of their style up in there. So Shakur, today is your day on this Friday, and we about to get this work. Yeah, you hate. My bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. So we gonna hit play. You already know we keep this on um on mute because we don't really be wanting to play on the playback gang. You feel me? The playback squizzy. You know what I mean? So we just gonna you know keep it light like this. You know what I mean? So. We just gonna be going over it, and I'm gonna be talking to y'all about it. You know what I mean? So. You hear that? We gonna turn it down. It's the first round. It's the first round, and dude throwing shots. Dude tried to come straight at Shakur. And what I like about Shakur is this is some old school business. You don't back up. When a guy come at you straight full throttle, you come back back. Just for a, a, a little moment in the round and little spots in the first round so that you can let him know, hey, bro, I'm the boss. Don't, don't think you just about to be out here getting off for real like that you feel me like i'm the boss don't trip and then you start stepping around and moving and as a as a uh i noticed this Shakur in the first round what he does is he's good at staying in position he's very good at staying in position and he only moves his head when he needs to and if you not if you not punching Shakur is gonna be Putting in data, making moves, stepping to the side. He never really goes straight back. He goes in a circle. It's a square circle. Because a square and a circle is the same thing. And that's a fact. That's why they call it the square circle. It's a fact. A square and a circle is the same thing. If anybody can explain me how, when them garlic butter uh, gang shirts get here, I'm gonna be sending them. Right now, Shakur Stevenson, dude, seeing he just can't run in without getting checked with something, but it's the first round, so he's still trying, but ooh. But what Shakur is doing is he going to dude's guts. Then he just hit him with a body shot and sat him down. But I feel like he kind of tripped, but I feel like it could have been a body shot too. Shakur coming out running the, the, the straight left and the 2-3 the from the southpaw position. That's what he doing. And it just depends because everybody always talk about that lead foot need to be on the outside. But those are outside rules. On the inside, the rules are different. And then another thing I'm noticing, Shakur knows how to use his jab. See, when he using his jab, he ain't using his jab like how everybody else be using it as actually using the jab as a weapon. He using the jab to keep his rank, keep him, keep the guy in range and use it to turn him and control him. That was the first round. Oh yeah, that that was that was a knockdown. Hold on, we gotta pause it. Let me explain something to you. That was a knockdown in the first round because they just showed the replay. Dude's feet wasn't even close to Shakur's feet. Okay, but what it was is he got his foot on the outside because Shakur was on the outside. So I'm gonna explain it to you real quick. And this is just, just a quick synopsis on what he's doing. And staying in position right now is something that Andre Ward is good at doing because Virgil Hunter preaches and he is real strict about staying in position. So like Shakur left-handed, I'm left-handed. He running a two-three, right? But he keep pawing the jab and just using it to turn and control cousin. 
So look, what he doing is he pawn the jab, he running the two three. But when he drop dude on the outside, when you a little bit past um, arms length distance, Shakur was a little bit past arm length distance, maybe an arm and a fist. So when he stepped in, he threw the hook upstairs long, and then he threw it to the body. But dude had his hands up and he didn't see it. And body shots make your legs weak. So, pop, and he turned in. It's real short, huh? Bang, and then dude dropped. So, that was a clean knockdown by Shakur. And explain, you know what I mean? And I'm starting to notice that in the beginning of the round, you know, that's a temperament of a fighter, of somebody who really in there to work. You know what I mean? Dude came out full throttle trying to test Shakur, and he let him know, hey, bro, you got to come out here and have um, an educated approach, not it's, it's sweet science. So that, that means you got to be educated with every hand, every foot up here first. You remember? It's, it's, it's spiritual. It's not mental because mental is something you can't see. You only see the mental when somebody show you something through a physical thing. That's a fact. So we're going to go back. It's round two. This this one ain't long. It's round two. You're going to push play. Bang. And he dropped, uh, he dropped Cousin. Shakur just got hit with a slight jab. But see, the reason why Shakur ain't moving his head and he just stepping back because dude ain't really throwing his jab. He fighting in the, in the stereotypical come forward aggressive style. And now Shakur is picking shots to the body. He just hurt dude. He just hurt dude. This is, it say June 9th, 2020. I don't know how new this fight is, but dude, Shakur just hit him with the same two, three. And that's because dude is coming forward. He looping shots, but he not moving his head. He just tried to move his head, but he bringing his head over his feet. He hurt again. Dude hurt again because Shakur keep hitting him on his temple, temple with multiple shots. And it will throw your equilibrium off. This ain't going to be long. Don't even trip. He now he hitting him with short hooks and he in the shell. And look, hold on. I'm explaining to you what Shakur doing. This in the second round. The second round with two minutes, uh, a little bit. A minute and 17 left. We're gonna, we gonna backtrack. Alright, look, look, look. Shakur, when Shakur is left handed, so he's standing like this. This is left hand. I don't know what it looked like on the joint, but this is the left hand joint, right? I'm South Paul. He like this. Now, remember I told you, outside rules is different from inside rules. Now, outside rules, you want to keep that lead foot on the outside of the right-hander's foot so you can shoot the right hand down the pipe and just catch it. You can just, your head is out of the way. The jab won't go this way. The right hand ain't going to be able to hit you. They don't have to turn and cross their body and bang, and then you can pivot out to the side and keep working. But when you on the inside, it's different. Because when you on the inside, if you if you stand on the outside and the man's foot is on the inside of your foot, you're not going to be able to land no hook because I'm left-handed. So if I'm left-handed and I'm and you facing me and you keep your foot on the outside of mine, I'm splitting you down the middle. So this hand is the only hand I need to see. I'm going to be catching it. And then every time you, you're not going to throw the hook because I'm standing in the middle, in the middle of you because I'm standing directly in the, in the center. I didn't squared you up when we on the inside and that's still not right. You're not supposed to be squared in a squared circle. You're supposed to stand north to south. All right. That's it. It's different rules for different fighters, but I'll get to that in other film studies. Because if you are more of a square, squared up fighter, you have to compensate the rock your head east to west more. Because when you standing like this, you so north to south. Once you bend your knees, see how my head automatically goes west? You know what I mean? That's how you slip the jab as a southpaw. So what I'm saying is, when he in the middle like this, 
the, and he split the man down the middle when we toe to toe. We're actually on inside work, five ranges, body to body, inside, medium range, long range, boring range. I, listen, now it's time to talk real boxing. Go to the TMZ, they that way. That's left. What we is, we going to the right. So look, when you split him in the middle, right here, his hook is gonna be coming around here. He not gonna throw it because you can get a point for getting hit behind the head. All you can see is the front hand right here. So if you throw it straight, bang, you catch it like you would catch a jack. Or you could parry it when he throw it. If you keep the hand right here when he throw it, sometimes they like to throw it like they throwing it straight and then loop it at the last minute. If they throwing it straight, once you get used to it, you can catch it or you can parry it and knock it over that way and then run the six up under to the gut. But if they throw it straight, you can catch it and then kind of catch it like a jab, uh, deflect it. It wouldn't be really a parry, but you would catch it on the top of the glove and come over with your right hand and bring the hook back. Or, like I said, you could, um, if they looping it and at the last minute, all you do is close up like this. And then you catch it right there and shoot it straight down the pipe. Stop playing with me. Stop, stop, stop playing with me. These are all the moves that Shakur could be doing in there, and he knows that, but it's the second round on the inside because dude think he got inside work, but he doesn't have the technique. Just being on the inside, well in punches, don't mean you got inside work. It's rules on the inside, just like there's rules on the outside. It's rules in every range. I just gave you five ranges today. It's five ranges. I learned this from... Um, Abdullah, you know what I mean? Bashir Abdullah. He was a, a coach on the Olympic team for years. Shout out to my Muslim brother, Bashir Abdullah. Um, it's five ranges. Body to body when you're on the inside. Those are those are for people who got extreme power because you want to smother their power and wear them down. Then you got inside range. You know, you can catch them for the short ups and hooks hooks and uppies then you got medium range medium range you could throw straight punches you could throw all types of fundamental punches from medium range but you can also get hit in medium range um long range is for like more or less the lauras you know what i mean keeping you on the end of the jab the tommy hearns long even though tommy did have inside work but then we got um boring range you know what i mean that's when the 12th round when you want to fight and you just in prevent defense to, so you don't get hurt so you could win the fight all right y'all got all those ranges all right now shakur right now is as of using the shell like pernell whitaker but on the inside with it just catching punches you know what i mean slipping them do hitting with a couple early jabs in the second round but Dude, Shakur's not worried about that. And when you really got defense, them little jabs, that don't mean nothing for real, dog. This is real boxing we talking. We gonna continue real quick. All right, so dude's still working. Dude, Shakur slipping body shots. He breathing, he relaxed, he focused. He got his knees bent. And he still is pawing the jab out and then flicking it to control the distance, man. Your fire, you gotta know your distance. Who said that in what video? Oh, that was a good counter hook out of the um. That was a good counter hook out of the the high guard defense. And another thing Shakur is doing, he's switching up the defenses. He's um. He's shooting up and down, um, not shooting up and down, but he's switching up the defenses by going to the high guard, to the shell. Those give different looks, and you can land different punches off those. Now he's burning the guy out with his feet. See, these are the things I'm talking about that reminds me of Floyd because he on the inside giving you a little work. He's standing in front of you, measuring you, not letting you do anything. And now he's taking dude, burning. And it, it's called burning, burning, burning him out with the feet blah 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 couldn't talk but 
I, I heard Floyd say that in sparring. So you, you gotta you gotta know how to burn them out with your feet. Cause you make them miss shots, you make them reach in, stuff like that. You know what I mean? Shout out to Shakur for knowing the craft. We gonna talk about real boxing on here. This is gonna be a short one, just a little quick 30 minute video. Just to, just to give you a synopsis on who really is the best at these weights, at, at these lower weights, between 135 and 120, 122. To 122 to 135, the best fighter is Shakur Stevenson. Facts. He just doubled up the right hand. Dude tried to slip it, but he keep ducking his head. And he's still catching him right now. Now he's putting combinations together. And he just keep running the same combo, dog. 2-5-2, two, 2-3-2, two, 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 step around. Paul with the jab. You know what I mean? Relax, stay relaxed. Stay relaxed. Stay relaxed. Now he controlling his head because when they get trying to clinch, when you control his head like that, dude can't see where he need to punch. And, the, and no, okay, I'm talking about Shakur right now, but listen, dude is not using his jab. If you're not moving your head, he trying to catch some punches a little bit better now, but he not, ooh, but then Shakur keep ducking his head up in the high guard like this, and Shakur keep running the uppy. I mean, you can't be ducking your head. That's when your coach is going to tell you, bring him up out of there. When you duck your head, the coach is supposed to tell you, bring him up out of there. He's switching up the defenses. He in the corner catching shots. And another thing Shakur did good. Let me pause this real quick. When Shakur went against the ropes, okay, he did. Like, say this is the ropes. The first thing he didn't do. Listen, A.B., I love you to death. You my man, bro. Our birthday is on the same day, July 28th. I was born 1980, though. I love you to death, bro. But I got to use you as an example to explain something technically. Now, in some fights, when Adrian Broner goes against the ropes, and not just Adrian Broner, it's a lot of fighters who do this. They go against the ropes and they do this. This is bad business, dog. Because when you go against the ropes and you lean, sometimes you can lean back and make a miss. But if you if you hold that position too long, you're not giving different looks. So when you go like this, you make a miss upstairs, any smart man gonna go to your guts. And if you stoop, and then you can keep blocking your head, but then you giving up your body, which is gonna slow you down. You're not supposed to be leaning back on the rope, standing straight up. When Shakur went to the corner and went to the rope, he kept the ropes behind him on his shoulder and stayed at the angle like this. And then lean back a little bit. You see how I am? So dude trying to let off hooks, they catch him. Uh, and then he dropped the head down. Listen, the defense is not up here, y'all, who think y'all be doing the shell sometimes. It's not up here like this. You got to tuck it. You see how I'm tucked? And look, shoulder relaxed. Shoulder over his head down tuck. Then I drop down here, and the hands stay here. Look, I can relax. If he throwing them, just catch him. Catch him. Right there. Catch, catch. Then you start moving. Then you switch it up. Grab him by the end time. And Shakur just did all that in the corner. And those things are things that you know, Muhammad Ali's, the Sugar Ray Leonard's, knowing how to use your hands to control somebody. I know ain't nobody ever broke this down before in the chat, but that's why I'm him. That's why I'm King Chivo. He's doing all of these things in a matter of seconds, dog. He going from here. One, two, three, four, five, six. You see that? That's, that's real good boxing. It's a lot of fighters that's not doing that. They not even in there with aggressive Mexican style fighters. If you put it, Shakur in there with a boxer, he really gonna pick him apart because he's he he's the highest of boxing as the amateur. He went to the Olympics as a silver medal, but then he also has every he knows what punches to throw in every range. So he understands range, and when you understand distance, you understand timing. And when you already hey 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 hey, don't make me listen. Don't make me do it. 
You know what I mean? It's a new moon. When this is over, I'm going to read my new moon prayer. And we going to keep it working, dog. Real quick. So we going to go back. And we going to continue. We going to fast forward a little bit. We going to fast forward it a little bit. That's the fourth round. We gonna go to the This one don't go that long. We already at the 12 minute mark on the video. It's about to be over. We gonna go to the fifth round real quick. A minute and eight on the fifth round. Timestamp joint. A minute and eight. It's a minute and eight seconds left on the fifth round. Let's work. Alright, he's still running the same combination, dog. What? Like, how? You gotta be moving your dome pieces, Paul. Nah, he just, ooh, he, he switched it up in the fifth round. He ran a left hook and then ran the, the hook straight. And he's doing something that I know, oh, he just did something. And I need to rewind it real quick. Because if you watch one of my fights, I know this is, this is a move that they work on. Okay, 50 seconds left. 50 seconds left in the fifth round. All right, listen, I got a story for you. I was fighting in Mexico. Um, I fought most of my fights in Mexico because up here all the promoters was hating and they wouldn't let me get on the cards, you know what I mean? So, and cause it's about selling tickets. I know y'all don't know that. So, um, even on the local level, you know what I mean? Or you gotta pay somebody to fight and then it, it's just, it's so crazy, crooked. It's no different from the music business. That's why I, I inform, I want all these fighters to start learning how to run their own programs. Get lawyers, lawyer up. Get dietitians, get nutritionists. Get vegan nutritionists. Get cooks, you know what I mean? To really help you with your craft so all you gotta work on is fighting, bruh. These are the things that can help you as a boxer in real life, not just buying whips. All that stuff, whips depreciate the value unless you're getting a really nice old school classic and fixing it up, or you buying a foreign exotic, you know what I mean? Property, land, and gold, let's go. So, um, I'm about to open this window up real quick. Uh, what was we talking about? Oh yeah, it's a move that my man Steve had did was telling me to do in one of my fights steve nelson all right my man steve nelson he coached me in at least two of my fights um i think one of my fights but listen steve nelson can do everything he gave me a taper then after he tapered me he was in the in his room playing the drums doing a cover for maybach on future's album evolve then after that he was in the army too. We went to Mexico. We drove. He coached me for my fight, warmed me up. He at 50 seconds in the fifth round. At 50 seconds in the fifth round, as a left-hander, when you left-handed and a person right-handed, they usually dip their head over here. The right hand dude, and I train on the mitts to throw my hook like this. This is how you throw a proper hook. This is how you throw it. Babe can't get no calls right now. Babe, I'm live. I'm gonna have to hit you back. Don't say nothing. I'm not live, but I'm on a I'm recording. She just banged on me. See, my, my joints is real. We keep it 100. Look, when you doing it on the mid, you yum, yum, yum. That's how you throw a hook. Bang. Fundamental hook. The elbow must be up. It's a square circle. Remember, a square. That's 90 degrees. 90 degrees. When you throwing your hook, if your elbow ain't up, that's a slap. That's not a real hook, dog. That's a slap. The all, listen, four knuckles must land. 
solid. That's a hard shot. That's how you land. You don't land two knuckles and you'll break your knuckles. You land the fist flat, bang, right there. Just like that. Now, when a right-hander is dipping his head over here and I'm a lefty, Steve was telling me you gotta chop the hook down. So you gotta go like Maidana. That's what I'm saying. When he, but he dipping his head over here. So if he dipping his head over here and you throw the hook, he gonna slip it and be up in here. You gotta chop it down, bang. So as soon as he slip, you chop it down, bring that. All right, okay, we're done, we're done. And I know that to be true, and I know they teaching that because Shakur is doing it at 50 seconds in the fifth round, and Steve Nelson, who trains alongside of Shakur Stevenson and Terrence Crawford. And these are the things, and that's Shakur Stevenson comparing me, comparing him to Terrence, because he's like these other great fighters. If you're not doing what these guys are doing, you're not on a level. I don't care who you is. I'm not talking about in the style you're doing it. I'm talking about doing the fundamental move. Throwing, hooking off the jab. So it don't matter if you fight like Mike Tyson and you go, oh, that's a hook off the jab. You fighting like this and you jab and hook. If you Ali and you flicking, you hop, hop, that's hooking off the jab. That every fighter should be doing that. I don't care who you is. I don't care what style you got. That's fundamentals. Every great fighter gonna do that. Now go back, watch some of your fighters that you think is the best and see if they actually be doing moves like that. Cause I'm gonna, let me tell you, they don't. I got one for you, they don't. They don't be doing that. They be throwing the same jabs over and over and over again, not moving their head. Like that's not good business. Especially when you run into the Terrence Crawfords and the Shakur Stevensons, like, and the Javante Davises, because he got that that Deontay Wilder in his. Oh. All right, okay, we gonna keep working. He working now, he controlling dude's head, cause dude tired and dude really wanna get on the inside so he can rest and tie him up. But he not letting him, he keep burning him out, making him run into punches now. And dude keep leaning his head forward over his knees. That's how you get hit with uppies. He just put a combination together, he taking out the trash. He taking it out. Too sharp to core, too sharp. Got the baby taper. He ain't even, and he let dude get off just now. Just to make him tired. Then he went to the belly button and hurt him. He hurt him, he hurt him. He went to the belt line and then came upstairs with the straight. He threw a six, two, three. Shakur Stevenson, now he throwing an eight. Now he throw a two, three again. So let me explain the punches to you because I know y'all don't know. This is, this is how, you know, I'm teaching. I'm trying to help y'all. I'm trying to help y'all, for real. So look, this is the one. It don't matter if you left or right handed. I'll stand right handed for y'all. I'll stand, this is the right hand. My left hand is in the front. This is the one. This is the two. This is the three. This is the four. This is the five. This is the six. This is the seven. This is the eight. All right, we gonna do it left handed. Left handed, my right hand is in the front. The one is the jab, the two is the cross, the three is the right hook as a southpaw, the four is the left hook as a southpaw, the five is the lead up, the six is the back up, the seven is the hook to the guts, the eight is the hook to the guts, all right? And if you wanna add nine, you can add the overhand right, you know what I mean? All other punches, we differentiate punches. Hey, when he do this, when he jabbing straight like this over and over, you jab straight one time or catch his jab and then shoot a up jab. That's slipping to the end. Uh, you know what? That's another one. I'm not going to even, this is what I'll be saying. Don't, if you trying to get on here and debate and you don't know boxing for real, that's not what you want to do. Just watch the channel, learn, and then we can all grow as a community. But you can't be getting on here debating because I know y'all don't even understand some of this stuff I'm saying. And that and it's not for everybody. But this stuff is real fundamental and it can become complex because it's so simple. 
because you have to start put adding multi-dimensional layers on top of each other so that you can get to be like Shakur Stevenson because he can control space and time and distance that makes you multi-dimensional because the things that he doing in here the, the, the dude's attributes don't have no fact of no matter in his time he doesn't have what matters and that's IQ or spiritual execution Somebody's texting me like they went crazy. We gonna check on it real quick. You know what I mean? Hold on, let me see. Who's texting? My dude DJ trading stocks, getting it in. And my cousin just said he'll hit me back. Gotta invest. So look, we gonna keep working real quick. We 34 minutes in, I'ma take it a little bit longer. We doing a, a quick synopsis film study on the best fighter besides Gervonta Davis. I'ma say Gervonta Davis and Shakur Stevenson are the best fighters in between 122 and 135, period. Hands down, facts. So now um, it's still the it's the sixth round, the beginning of the sixth round. They working, and he just really burning dude out with the feet at this time, giving him different looks. Sometimes catching his punches on the inside, sometimes burning him out with the footwork. You feel me? He just giving him different looks. Bang. He hurt his hand a little bit throwing it because he landed. He didn't land it uh, sharp. That was in the sixth round. He didn't land it with the all four knuckles. Now he breaking dude down on the inside. He breaking him down on the inside. Controlling him with his head. Taking him in a circle. Walking him. That was that. See, he doing stuff that people just, and I'm calling it out as he doing it. He's walking with dude on the inside. Keeping this part of his head on the side of dude's head. Walking him in a circle. Taking the angle, ripping him to the gut. They just showed the instant replay. And he hit dude on the belt line. We're going to say that was low. That was a little below the belt line. We got to keep it real. It still was a good body shot on the bladder. That, them joints would be hurting. Now he's still doing the same thing. He got dude beat on the inside because he's doing what I said, dude. Was keeping his, his lead foot on the inside of dude's foot. But then when he get at, ooh, we just hurt him to the guts with the six. He not getting up. I'm about to rewind it. He hurt. He broke him down too bad. He not even excited about that because cause dude wasn't even nothing to get excited about. He going to the guts. So what he doing is he now he at medium range. He hit him with the seven and then came with the six. Fight over with because he can control all ranges. And he's shaking his head walking around the ring because he he know how easy this is for real. He understands it. I'm not saying he's not happy he didn't win, but he like, man, this was easy work, bro. As far people is better than this. And that's no disrespect to the guy he in there working with. You heard him six rounds of punishment. We ain't even got a... You know what I mean? Six rounds of punishment to the guts. And you know why getting stopped to the guts is bad? Getting stopped to the guts is, is bad because it's kind of like dude is woke with his eyes open. Like, I know it hurt, but you can just stand up and just be like, I'm gonna just scrap. You can do your, 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 um, Yo, Arturo Gotti went, went, went. <laughs> Mickey Ward hit him with the boot with the liver. And he was like, he just tried it. He might have went down, but then he got up and he was just trying to fight with the. His ribs was was sitting on the couch and he was just trying to. Hey, if you a hoe, you a hoe, bro. That's it. Now get knocked out when you a punch you didn't see to the chin. That's slightly different. That's like a real defensive issue. All people, everybody get hurt to the body. Everybody gets hurt to the body, dog. 
everybody. So it's kind of like, and you don't have to have power to hurt somebody to the body. You just gotta hit them with a good body shot, clean, you gotta pick it. It don't matter if you throwing it, ripping hard as you can. Yes, those do break you down over time, but them little shots that you don't see when you just up, 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 poke them in there, up, up, them shots is the ones that up, and you start, up, boom, and then you start taking them shots as he was doing. Another thing I noticed that Shakur does that he's very good at is that is he has a the head movement. He can be slick, but he also has a, a Refredo Benitez type of head movement to where he makes minimal movements, but still is in position. Let me explain it to you real quick. I'm gonna just get low. He'll be like this and he'll be going up, 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 up. But he not really moving nowhere. He not going all the way down here, leaning on, that's out of position. Because when you squatting on a, on a barbell, if you lean too forward with the heavy weight, you gonna fall forward. You always wanna keep the knees and shoulders in between the, in between the, uh, I mean the head and shoulders, in between the knees. You don't wanna be this way, back this way, leaning forward this way, or back here. You know what I mean? Even when you pull counter and you bring your head forward, then you come straight up and pull. Sometimes you can just pull off to the side and bang, as of a la Floyd, but Shakur will be right here and he'll be like, uh, and he'll just be looking at you because you really not trying to get hit. And he completely comfortable in his defense. So all the moves you doing, he like, uh, 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 bang, bang, and then start running shots. And, not, not, and those are the things that I start to start to notice. See, y'all don't notice those things, or some people is because the y'all watching the wrong boxers. These boxers from this era is not as good as those boxers back then. So that we're not even gonna, cause this ain't the golden era. The golden era is in the 80s, and that's when they had the best boxing. You know what I mean? You, everybody was scrapping and it was really it was about money but it was also about skill too it was really and that was the highest level of skill bar none man that, that's it dog i just wanted to talk about shakur stevenson today but his name is really too sharp shakur i gave him that name that's his name i don't he don't even have a fight so he need to be going by too sharp shakur stevenson because that just go together. Too sharp Shakur, you know what I mean? He's very sharp, he's very calculated. It's, you know, it's a square circle. Square circle, dog. It's the same thing. Now listen, if anybody can tell me how a square and a circle is the same thing, hey, you get Garlic Butter Gang, Gangster Gratuity, and when these shirts come in, I will be sending them out. We're gonna start having prizes for these riddles because they can help you learn something. Yes, a square and a circle is the same thing, okay? If you could tell me how, you are gonna be on your way. I'm not giving you the answer. Follow me on Instagram, at Killatainment. Hit me up on Twitter, Twitter be jumping. My Twitter is uh, at Cordon de Chivo, better known as Hamza. Shout out to my Muslim people. Um, it's, Rosh Hashanah, it's Rosh Hashanah today, I think. Let me check the calendar for all my people, all my Hebrews out there. Let me see. Let me check. Yes, it's Rosh Hashanah today. Rosh Hashanah. Um, you know, celebrate, shalom, and then to, you know, to all my Christians, man, God bless you. Man, we just keeping it right. Listen, don't hate, show some love, comment, subscribe, and you know what I got to say, man. Hey, eat right, bro. You just got to eat right. You know what I mean? Like, I don't care about all your education, because Sebi, Dr. Sebi, proved all of that wrong in the Supreme Court of Law. It's documented. Come on, man. Let's, let's be real. Let's just be real. Come on, man. You got to be real. So that's it for today, man. We out of here. Two Sharp Shakur. He's the next one. He got, he, he's a really good fighter. Y'all got to watch these, the 80s boxing. If, if the James Tonys. And the, if you're not doing what those fighters are doing in your own style, like I was saying before, 
don't even think about being one of the best. Don't don't even. You're only gonna be a B plus fighter. It takes a lot of skill. You gotta know how to catch punches with your hands, with your elbows, with your shoulders. You gotta know how to slip punches. You gotta know how to roll them when they punch you. Just roll it. The head roll. You know what I mean? You gotta know how to roll the body shots. You gotta know how to evade them. You gotta know how to head control to make the head and neck tired by pulling it down. You gotta know how to tie a man up and trap his gloves so he can't pull his gun. I'm done. Hey, don't hate. Show love, subscribe, eat right. We out one.